First up, we have Dr. Christian Eggers, Assistant Professor of Biomedical Sciences. Who, a, a, oh, Associate Professor of Biomedical Sciences. Congratulations. <laughs> and his title is, Who's the Boss? What Molecular Genetics and Microbiology Informs Us About Who We Are as Individuals. Uh, I'm really glad he read the title so I don't have to, because otherwise it cut into my, uh, into my time. Uh, this is a really ambitious title, and uh, uh, I, didn't, I wrote it before I thought about what I really wanted to say, and so um, I'm actually not going to be talking a lot about this. Uh, I, I probably would, would prefer this title, uh, Why Does Individuals' Genetic Identity Matter? Um, uh, similar idea won't be quite as um, esoterical. Uh, so when we think about our genetic identity and what it means to us, um, why we all care about what our genes say about us as individuals is because this is the next frontier of medicine. So personalized medicine is where uh, uh, treatment is going. The idea that um, perhaps one treatment for everybody is no longer going to work but instead we should be taking our genes, sequencing them, mapping them, marking them, developing specific treatments for individuals, developing wellness strategies for individuals based on what those genes uh, uh, tell us from an individual person. So this is just, uh, I did this uh, yesterday, and uh, you, know, you can see all these uh, uh, articles about personalized medicine and how much it's taking over the field uh, of, uh, of healthcare. Um, the issue is that it is um, dependent upon a major assumption that, that um, has been made for a long time. They've made it in medicine, we make it often in, in uh, scientific research, and they make it in criminal law. And uh, that's really what the focus is going to be, um, this assumption and how um, new data suggests that maybe that assumption is not correct. Um, this is the assumption that, that, that is correct. We are all made of cells. We've known for 200 years that this is the case. Um, and, and when we talk about genomes, we have to think at the cellular level, because obviously the cells are what encapsulate our, uh, our genome. Um, and uh, when we look at each cell in an individual, um, uh, they have genes, right? They have a genome. And the, the assumption that has been made is that every cell in a given individual has the same genome. So one of the ways that we identify ourselves uh, as genetic individuals or individually using our genes is to sequence them. Um, and I know I am me because all of my cells have the same genome and I know that you all are you because you have your genomes and not mine. Uh, and, that's, and that's the assumption that's made. When we, when we talk about personalized medicine, we're going to be sequencing that genome to treat um, that individual. Here's where the problem comes in. Last year, there was a paper published that we are, um, and we are, not all are, but, uh, but many humans, many more humans than were thought, are what we call genetic mosaics. Um, and what this means is that not all of our cells have the same genome. In fact, there may be many, many different genomes making up our cells. Um, why does this happen? It can happen for a variety of reasons. Normally it happens very early on in our development as we go from one cell up to billions of cells. Um, and uh, sometimes it happens for weird things like we absorb siblings or twins in the womb. Uh, sometimes it's environmental assaults, sometimes it's, it's uh, genetic rearrangements or mutations. But whatever the case may be, when you look at us, the genome that we see in the leg may not be the same genome that we see in the breast or the arm or the head. And what this means for personalized medicine is that we don't necessarily know how to answer a lot of these questions. So if we all are a multiplicity of genomes, which genome do we screen? When we take skin samples or swab our throats, are we actually getting the genome that we should be concerned about? Which genome do we treat? which genome gives us more insight into the potential for cancer or uh, uh, determine certain physiological effects? How do we determine a wellness strategy if we don't know what, uh, uh, you know, what this multiplicity genome says about you? And this last one, of course, way outside of my field, but, um, uh, but is an area that I think will be of investigation. Certainly lawyers know how to explo exploit loopholes better than anybody. And the question is, if an individual's got multiple genomes, um, how do you uh, how do you then you know nail nail that uh, uh, coffin shut on on a criminal case using DNA? Does does DNA evidence really mean what we think it means? And so there are lots of things in this area uh, about sort of looking at our genetics and really determining 
um, what that says about us as an individual, but uh, that's all I have time for now. So I will see the floor and thank you for your attention.